Hey guys, Paul Lin here, talking to you a little bit today about investing in trading. And what is the hardest thing about trading or investing, but certainly this leans more on trading. People ask me, what is the hardest thing about it? Is it learning how to analyze and screen stocks? Is it trying to ascertain the patterns and figure out when to buy and when to sell? What is it? What's the hardest thing about it? Where do people most often go wrong and get tripped up and end up losing money and then going out saying, ah, this is hard, this isn't for me. You're not going to believe it when I tell you because this is one of those things that if you've never really played the market, if you've never you know, bought and sold on an open market like that, then you probably are, you, you just know for a fact that it's something technical. It's something about numbers and analysis. But honestly, the place where everybody needs the most training, they need the most work, they screw up the most is controlling their own emotions, okay? It, it's not something that you would just naturally assume. It all just seems kind of cold and calculated and it's just a numbers game. But the fact is where most people get lost when they try to buy and sell stocks to gain money, their emotions get the best of them and it screws up their head and they start making stupid decisions. So I want to give you an idea of what that is just to help you understand the problem, all right? There's a stock and let's say this stock always bounces up and down between like nine and ten dollars, okay? So you're thinking, well, you know, if I buy it at nine and I sell it at ten, that's a pretty good trade. That's a nice return, especially, you know, if I put, you know, 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars on that, that stock goes from nine to ten dollars. I just made more than a 10 percent return on investment. Wahoo, right? And yeah, wahoo. I mean, that's an awesome trade. But what happens is that stock's going down and it's no stock goes from nine to 10, back to the nine, back up to 10, nine to 10. It doesn't work that way. It kind of goes up and then goes down and might go up again and then down a little bit more. And it's always, it never goes quite as high as the last time or it goes quite a bit higher than last time. And the same thing for the peaks and the valleys. You never really know how much it's going to go down or how much it's going to go up. So there is some guessing involved. Now guessing doesn't sound very professional, does it? But that is inherent in the game because no matter what statistical models and AI and analytical tools that you use, none of those things can tell the future, okay? If it could, then we would all just have AI stock bots running our accounts for us and give it, you know, making a million dollars a day and we wouldn't have to do anything but withdraw money whenever we got hungry and wanted to order a pizza, right? That's not reality. So no matter how smart you are, no matter how many degrees you have, no matter how much training you've done and how many decades of experience you have trading, when it comes right down to it, you're still guessing, okay? It's still a guessing game. You still, no matter how smart you are, you're never going to know the future. Nobody does, okay? So, no matter where you're at, don't be discouraged by the fact that you're guessing, but you need to be very conscientious of the fact that where there's guessing and uncertainty, there's fear. And that fear can cause us to do stupid things. So I see this stock and it bounces between nine and $10. 
but it doesn't go exactly to nine and ten dollars. Sometimes it goes down to eight seventy or eight eighty. Sometimes it only goes down as low as about nine twenty before it starts going back up. And sometimes it doesn't make it all the way to ten. Sometimes it goes up to nine seventy, nine ninety, and sometimes it it goes up to maybe eleven or twelve. So when do you buy and when do you sell? Well. It's always going to be a guess, but I take my guess and I say, uh, it's down to 910 and it's really kind of looking like it's trying to level out. And I think it's about to turn around and start going back up. I think I should buy it at 910. So I take my money and I put it into this stock at $9 and 10 cents. And I just sit back and start wringing my hands waiting because I know it's about to pop up and make me a few hundred dollars, right? And instead, it all of a sudden starts dropping. And my $10,000 buy-in is now only worth $9,400. I just lost $600 in two hours. And I'm like, oh no. And my heart just feels like it's just sinking down into my shoe. And oh no, what do I do? I just lost $600. If I sell now, I can stop the bleeding. I only lost $600 and at least I still have $9,400. It sucks, but I'd rather sell it now than watch it keep going down. But here's the thing. I analyze this stock. I know it always goes up and down. And I know that there's some uncertainty about how far down and how far up it goes. So you know what? I'm just going to take a deep breath and believe in my analysis. I said that this thing's going to go up. It's shown me every sign in the world that it's going to go up. There was no you know, news release or anything like that that would make this stock just plummet. I'm just going to ride it out. And so I look away and I grab my you know, one of my video games and I start playing games and just take it easy and it's going to be all right. And I set a couple of alerts on my phone. You know, if it goes down this low, maybe start worrying. Otherwise, just let me know when it comes up this high so I can sell. And I look back in a couple of hours and what's the damage? Oh, look at that. It started going back up. Now my $10,000 buy-in, it's not worth $9,400. Now it's worth, you know, $12,000 or, you know, $10,300, you know, something more realistic. Oh, oh, that's better. Now we're on the right track, but I know it's going to keep going up. So I'm looking at this and it's going up and I say, ooh, my buy-in, I bought in at $10,000. Now it's up to $10,500. But it looks like it's starting to turn around. What do I do? I can hurry up and sell and I've got $500. But this stock usually goes up higher than that. And if I hang out and wait, this might just be a momentary hiccup. And then it's going to turn around again and keep going the rest of the way up. Mm. And what do you do in that moment? And you say... I'm certain it's going to go back up, right? So you just let it go and you wait and no, it just goes back down and keeps going down. And you're like, if I had just sold, I would have 500 extra dollars in my pocket. And instead, it's back down to the same price I bought it at. <sighs> You know, and, and you're miserable. You just missed an opportunity to make $500. Doesn't that just feel crushing, you know? But then you hang out another day and it goes back up to that level and you see it go up to 500 and you're like, finally, I can get the $500 I was supposed to get yesterday. So you sell and you're like, Fine, great. I got my $500. I just got it a day late. If I had sold it yesterday, I could have bought it again when it went back down. I could have $1,000, but at least I got my $500. And as soon as you sell it, the stock keeps going up and up and up. And you're like, 
what the hell? I sold it too early. And then you pull out your calculator and you're, you do the math and you're like, if I had just waited you know, two more hours, instead of making $500, I could have made $1,200. <sighs> and even though you just made $500, you're still just depressed because you missed out on the $1,200 payoff. You see what I'm saying? There's a lot of emotion in this thing. And if you're undisciplined and greedy or nervous, stock trading is going to be very, very hard for you because you have to know how to put your money in. And like carpenters say, if you've ever heard this expression, it's, you know, something that comes from the field of carpentry. They say, measure twice, cut once. Same thing with trading. Do your analysis before you buy in. Make sure you know what the bottom is, how low this thing is likely to go or even could possibly go, how high it could even possibly go. Make sure you're very comfortable with the dynamics of this stock, not just the probabilities, but also the potentials. And I will get more into all of this later on down the road. But make sure you're familiar enough before you hit that button and buy and you're much less likely to be unpleasantly surprised. So how do you kind of conquer your emotions? If you're new to this thing, or even if you're not, what I recommend to everybody, and I work with a few people one-on-one, -on -one, coaching them on uh, trading, and what I recommend to them, in fact, it's not even a recommendation, it's something I insist on, is that you start a virtual account and a lot of the brokerage firms, you can sign up and they will give you an account with fake money in it that you can start buying and selling you know, stocks and see how your account performs based on the actual market, right? So I recommend this to you as much as you know, the people that I work with one-on-one, -on -one, and that is get that virtual account and you know, whenever you learn something, whenever you learn a strategy or a technique, get in there and practice with it for a few weeks at least. What you want to see in your account is a, a history of several trades, most of which are green, not red. And when I say green and red, I mean you made money instead of lost money, okay? Losses happen. It's a fact of life. But as long as the wins outweigh the losses, then you're playing the game right and you're going to make money. But do this with virtual money and it's still, you're going to feel it. All, even though it's not your real money, you're still going to feel it. And, you know, take this as a test. I need to have good performance before I put real money into this account. I need to be consistently earning money and I need to be very comfortable with my strategy. I'm not just guessing and pissing money in the wind and, you know, seeing what happens like someone rolling dice on a table. No, you're making logical decisions. You're analyzing and you're setting expectations and, you know, the things are working out according to your expectations most of the time. And when you treat this like a test, it's going to matter a lot more. So even though it's virtual money, when you tell yourself, until I have a good history of solid uh, profit, you know, in my account, I'm not going to allow myself to trade real money. And I really want to. So anytime you make a bad decision, it's going to feel like you just got kicked in the gut. You're going to be like, oh man, oh, I wish I hadn't done that, you know? But this is going to help you get over your emotions and get to that position where, you know, you see your money going down and you say, I know better. I know it's going to come back up. That doesn't scare me. Somebody give me a donut. I'm hungry. And just turn away from it. And same thing, when that stock goes up and you say, you know, this is as high as I expect it to go, and you hit the button and then it keeps going up, 
You're not going to feel disappointed anymore. You're going to be like, that's okay. I'm not worried about the $700 I missed. I'm happy about the $500 I just made. And you know what? I'm going to make it again and again and again. And I'm staying safe and I'm not being greedy and I'm not making stupid emotional decisions. Think about this. Every time you trade, you will almost always miss out on some opportunity. You will very rarely ever buy it at the very bottom and sell it at the very top, right? That statistically is almost never going to happen. Whenever you buy it, chances are there's always going to be a little bit, oh man, I could have got this for 10 cents less. I could have got this for, you know, 7% less than I paid. Oh man, that's unfortunate. And when you sell it, same thing. Man, if I had just sold it a half an hour ago, I would have made 3% more money. And if I had just waited two hours, oh, I could have made more money. It's going to be like that every single trade. The trick is learning how to focus on getting a consistent, predictable result and generating positive income, not in focusing on every little missed opportunity because no matter how long you've been doing this, there will always be missed opportunity. And who cares? Who cares? Right? Unless you have a crystal ball that you can read that tells the future, you will always miss some opportunity. But the question is, are you making a ton of money? Are you getting a big fat return? If so, then you have to learn to not worry about the misses, not worry about the occasional losses, not worry when you see your stock going down a little bit and the, the value going down a little bit because you know it's going to go back up. Whenever you make a decision and you say, okay, I'm going to sell and I'm happy with this, or you make a decision not to sell and you miss an opportunity, that will happen. It's part of life deal with it. It's going to hurt at first, but you've just got to conquer that and get to that state where it no longer affects you. Once it no longer affects you, that means you're trading on a clear head. That means you've learned how to analyze. You've learned confidence in your analysis. And now is when you're really going to start making money. Once you get to that point where the emotions there are always going to be some feelings, let's be honest. But once they're no longer affecting your judgment, you're ready to start trading real money. So that's it. That's what I got for you today. Work on that virtual account and conquer your emotions before you start playing with real money. Develop a winning strategy. Get good at it. Get confident in it. And once you have solid, sustainable, predictable results, then grab some money out of your check, checking account and throw it into that brokerage account. But first, conquer those feelings. That's what I got. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe so you can get more good stuff. I'm here trying to put money in your pocket and I'm not even asking for any in return. How many people out there trying to do you a favor like that, right? So. Stick with me, subscribe. I'm going to keep trying to help and do what I can. Thank you so much for watching today. You take care and have a great day.